Hello everybody. Um, Saturday here. Um, I always get a bit nervous doing these videos, even though I'm, I know I actually upload later. But uh, yeah, I wanted to put the, some music on the background just to create a bit of a vibe. But the trouble is, then they start saying that you can't put um, music you haven't put. Um, What's the word got permission to use for ever, so yeah, I can't really do that. Um, I've got something up coming up that I'm going to do later to do with them. Um, well, what I do, you know, I'll call it what I do. Um, later, uh, I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, two things I want to discuss at the moment. Um, uh, everyone's going to, everyone's talking about this, so, um, I might as well talk about it. Um, we're in the middle of this ongoing funeral of a, you know, who um, Controversial about because of many things. Um, so today there's two different things about this video. It's going to be around the self-situation around freedom of speech. Um, Right, so one thing with, with the whole th ongoing funeral thing, um, the country's very divided about the monarch over situations like things like this, and they want to really use this, it, sit, events like this as an excuse to um, have their own voices of dissent heard. And I think when it's to do with something like this, to do with royalty or say the funeral of Thatcher, um, I think the normal rules about respect for the dead do need to be kind of set aside a little bit to actually let ordinary verse, um, voices be heard. Um, sadly, the state seems to have other ideas. We're hearing of a lot of very disturbing cases of people who are being arrested simply for holding up placards saying, I don't recognise the monarchy, I want a republic, not my king. The most normally the police would just move these people along, but under this government, where we've had a series of quite disturbing laws put in place since the pandemic started, since Priti Patel decided to essentially start criminalising the right to protest. Instead of being moved on, they have actually been arrested and are going to actually be forced to defend their right to protest in a court of law. I mean, it's mad. It seriously is. So this is just one of the things that are really st is really starting to worry me right now. The other news, it's just been announced this morning that um, the popular YouTube YouTuber and content creator uh, and former BBC presenter Alex Belfield has been jailed for up to five years for apparently having stalked some members of the BBC staff, including <laughs> Jeremy Vine. Um, apparently this is because he, he wrote to them, sent emails to them that were alleged to, to I should just say alleged to have been threatening emails. Um, only, I think about 12 were produced in court, so even that's a bit of a dubious um, accusation. And we are, we're not told anything about what the content of these emails were. Um, and because he put up YouTube videos on his channel, Voice of Reason, it's quite a Voice of Reason really, but um, criticising these and other people. Um, personally, I don't like Belfield. He's very vitriolic. Um, he does seem to have issues. He's certainly very eccentric and has, does have a sort of mid 1990s type of humour that is quite cringe um, and also he's mates with 
Katie Hopkins, so I am very biased against him just for that. But I don't know, does this really, really equate to stalking and harassment? Most of the harassment actually happened as a result of his fans and followers targeting those individuals after he put up the videos criticising him, criticising them. And so, really, again, I find that problematic. I think the police should have gone after the people who actually were putting her harassing and abusive and horrible death threats on onto the profiles and social media pages of these uh, personalities working at the BBC and not accused Belford of having incited them under dubious circumstances. It's not, as a, it's not a crime to go on social media and give your views on someone so long as you're, as you're not saying someone killed that person or someone raped that person. I don't think he ever said that. So to me... Like him or not, I just think that latest, all these developments are just a sign of how this country is rapidly going from being a country where you are being told, yeah, you've got freedom of speech, except that you may offend a lot of people, may have some consequences, but yeah, say, say, say these things if you want. But we've slowly gone down a slippery slope where if you open your mouth to say anything that might upset anyone, you get a knock on the door from the police. Such societies are not free societies. They cannot call themselves democracies. I think it's hilarious that every school up and down the country has teachers telling their pupils, students, whatever you call them, Britain is a democracy. That means you can do and say as you like, so long as it doesn't contravene the human rights of other people. Well, I quite agree with that. No one would want to, you know, it's not fair to, you know, do something that seriously traumatises someone. But there's a credibly grey line here about what constitutes a traumatising injury to someone's, you know, I feel, I feel there's a difference between hurting somebody's sensitive feelings you can't, i mean look you can't go through life without having your feelings hurt people have said nasty horrible things to me throughout my life and i just developed a thick skin to it you know you know it hasn't stopped me from feeling often very <sighs> suicidal about a lot of things in the past but those things were not one of them you know i think people just need to learn how to develop thick skins and deal with criticism and not go running off to the authorities like some kid running off to his mummy because somebody hurt their feelings. You know, just makes sense. So back to the point, democracies do not go around putting people in prison simply for expressing opinions on things even if those things are on issues that might be a bit emotive. The only countries that do that are autocratic dictatorships. And if that's what Britain is now doing, then that is what Britain is now turning into. And I think we should all be worried. As for the whole right to protest thing, you may not like them, but you know, I do support... Uh, Extinction Rebellion not Animal Rebellion I can't stand them they're ridiculous as far as I'm concerned but there's not enough time for me to go into why those things are but even though I do support the right to protest peaceably without hurting anyone even if it involves doing something that ruins someone's day a little bit like you know super gluing yourself to railings or something like that you know People have a legitimate right to protest about things that matter to them and that they do have reasons to be very worried about. You know, 
And to me, this is just striking down on the little people, taking out every single right we have. And I'm just going to say this to you, the government, to Liz Truss, to Priti Patel, and to all the others. Your authorities, now and before you, they can take away our rights to common land. They can take away our rights to live in the houses we choose to build for ourselves and live in just because we aren't going to pay mortgage or rent. But you do not take away our right to protest about things we care about. We do not give you the right to do that. Right, that rant over. Um, I've got a ceremony of bloke coming up later. And to be honest, because of a lot of various things, I'm bricking it because I haven't done one in a while. So wish me luck. Bye.